Today I'm going to show you how to fit the double din head unit like this in the Fiat Ducato. This is going to be similar to the Peugeot Citroëns if you want to upgrade your head unit and if yours looks like this and you want it to look like this this video will just show you some of the steps and uh, how to do it. Today we're going to upgrade a Fiat Ducato. Uh, it's got a double DIN head unit, um, or it's got a single DIN unit at the moment. We're going to upgrade it to a Pioneer double DIN unit, um, which has got Apple CarPlay, Waze, Spotify, digital radio. We are going to fit a, uh, a digital aerial, also a DAB aerial, so um, we'll show you how to do that. We're going to remove the old one, obviously. Um, and then reroute the wiring in. So we're going to just show you the process of how that's done and what you need to do to get going. Now, you should have a, uh, a proper set of tools to remove the original radio. If you've not, you can do it with um, just some small little straight screwdrivers uh, as so, and then it's just a case of getting all fully fully in and just jiggling them about until they come out uh, that should be enough now to be able to get my hands on there now one thing that you do need to make sure is that majority of these radios are coded um, so if you've not got the code when you come to remove it because if you want to refit it at a later date and you've not got the code you could have an issue now, so we've removed the old radio, so all that we've got now is the connections. Obviously, we're going to have to remove the cage. So the top part, obviously, that needs to be removed, so it's just a good get hold of that and just a good pull, uh, and that will just come straight out. And again, if you're going to refit this at a later date, you want to make sure that this is safe so that we can refit this at a later date. So we're going to remove the rest of the cage, which is just a couple of screws, and then it should just bend out, uh, and again, we can refit that onto the old radio. So we're now going to start to run the wiring because we're going to put the DAB aerial um, somewhere along here. We've got to put the little microphone in for if you wanted to use the Bluetooth for the phone etc. So we will probably fit the microphone in here somewhere. Um, so it's going to be a case of removing the little cubby here and hopefully then this will give us some access into the back of here and we can route the wire through up this. The cor corner pillar just literally pulls off. Um, so that's nice and easy um, to get into and then we can run the actual DAB aerial up in this section here. Um, so we've got a Torx 20 and we're just going to remove the screws. And four. And this should just pop out and give us a little bit of access just to be able to route our cables then um, through here and then find our way up up to here. First we'll start with our microphone first. And then just down this side we've got other clips that we'll try and utilise Pull that back. I'll just actually run it in these clips. What a nightmare. So that's how that first wire ran. And then probably a good idea is just to intertwine this wire through some of the other wires, uh, being careful not to damage any of the other wires. Um, just literally, just to hold it, hold it in place so it doesn't go vanishing or disappearing. So I'm just gonna pop that through. So now that's secured and in place with that wire, so that shouldn't be able to go anywhere now. Just get a little bit more slack onto that. So we've got our DAB aerial. Now I'm going to leave the section that will actually stick onto the window screen as it is. 
um, first. I'm just going to try and fish the wire through again and again. Uh, all I did last time was just the wire in here, this is actually running um, down across here anyway. So if we just drop it down, if we just get a little hook uh, and then we can see it down the far edge, just hook that over and just pull that through and that will come back through with it. So I'm going to drop that there first. Just make sure there's no tangles or anything in the wire. Again, I'm just literally going to drop that through, put that at the back, get a little fish, fish hook. That should, in theory, just come straight through. You can do the same this side as well then. Make sure there's enough cable free to pull through first. And then push the cable over. And then bring that through. And again, what we're going to do is just exactly the same. I'm just going to clip that through so that both connections now that we need are there. Uh, a lot of the motorhomes, um, you've got the roof overhang, so um, it's possibly actually better to run the aerial a little bit lower down. And now when you look at the instructions of how the aerial has to run, so you have to run part of the aerial over the bodywork just to make a, an earth, basically, um, for it to operate correctly. So uh, if we undo this, so when we look at this, we've literally got to make sure that the trim can go back on. So we're not too close on the trim, it's not gonna go back on. Um, and then we obviously need to clean the window screen and then just fix this in, making sure that the metal part here is, is onto the, the metal. Uh, so again, we're gonna clean that and then just find the best place to actually fit that and then just make sure the metal section is connected properly. Uh, and we've got a good connection onto the, the bodywork there as well. So I'm going to fit the part to the window screen first. Again, just make sure that we're in the right area. And then Just make sure that that's nice and secure. And then again, just want to make sure that when we put our trim panel on, it's not going to cause any issues. We've just scoured off some of the paint here um, so that we're actually touching onto the, the bodywork. So we can then fit the other section. Just make sure that we've got a good connection and then any excess cable we can just literally take out the slack by running it as so again I'm going to try and make sure there's no kinks or anything like that just took the rest down, make sure it's not too tight, and then we can go ahead and fit our speaker back in. Line that back up. Make sure all of our trim is correct. And fully fitted back in. 
we can drop the panel back in with our four screws. Get it the right way around. And then we're ready then to fit the rest of the cage. We've got a little bit of cutting out to do. Put the panel into here. So we've got the new surround to fit into the cage into the surround. So what we can do is test fit this. Now there is a little bit of material inside of here that we've got to cut out to fit the to fit this, which is the two little brackets here. Now these hold the top section. I'm going to try and cut this out so that if we need to put this back in, we're able to glue it back in um, and reuse them at a later date. So we've got a little saw um, and it's literally just down, the little pop outs here, uh, it's just literally flush with those and we're just going to take them both off. do now is just give it a test fit just make sure that it's actually fitting in correctly that's better and then we've just had to trim a little tad more either side just as the section here protrudes through uh, and then the surround then just clicks clicks in and there's little pins top and bottom that just hook into place hopefully then we can pop our surround in So we've just bent the little side tabs either side over and what we're going to do now is we're just going to power the radio up and just make sure that it's all working correctly and then we'll fit it in properly. So the kit that we bought had the little extender for the aerial so fit that on. So we've made all of our connections, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally place it in. Right, then pop the ignition on. And then we can just check all the other, make sure the original aerial's working. Super, and then we'll just make sure that it all clicks in. Final little bit. And there we go. Um, looks as though it's always been there.